Hello, my name is Leonard. I make all of the textures and materials that you see on cc0textures.com and today I'm going to show you how I made this roofing tiles PBR material in Substance Designer. This is going to be less of a tutorial and more of a, a walkthrough maybe because I already have the entire material over here. And in this video, I'm basically going to um, go over all these different frames, these different steps, uh, and show you how I made this in retrospect, essentially. So we start off with the basic shape. The basic shape, as you can see, you can probably guess what it is. It's just a polygon. In this case, it's an octagon, but you can have any number of sides you can use. Um, I think up to 50 sides, which basically gives you a circle, so you can have any any kind of pattern in here that you like. You could even technically import your own image and this would still mostly work. Now this polygon gets beveled a little bit and then it gets a linear gradient. And what this linear gradient does is it essentially makes the top part almost black, it completely darkens it down, while the bottom remains untouched. And that's what creates this, this slant that you can see in all these tiles, which is going to be hugely important later on when we tile them. I also apply a separate gradient on the horizontal axis. This one is much more subtle. You can see the first one makes a big impact. The second one is barely noticeable. It's just out here a little bit. And and this is really just to represent some minor deformations that um, that these tiles might have. This one tile, which looks way too perfect, now goes into the distortion and cracks frame. Now this frame achieves two things. It one distorts the tile and it also adds in the cracks. So for the distortion, I use a slope blur with some Perlin noise. And this gives me these really small, these really fine deformations. Um, just to compare that, watch out for this, this edge. You can see, you can see it's, um, it sort of moves a little bit, like so. And what I've essentially done here is I have multiplied this four times. Um, and this allows me to have some variation variations between the tiles. Uh, you could go out and make this um, into a separate node so that you have kind of 50 different variations. But I think for this case, um, four of them are absolutely enough. In addition, we also have the cracks in here. These are really subtle there, for example. And they are generated up here, again, using four different cell textures, all with a different random seed in here. And these cell textures, they all get warped so that they are not so straight anymore because real cracks don't really behave like this. They more rather look like this. So this is again just a really simple warp with a Perlin noise. And then finally they get added a Perlin noise, another one, a very smooth one with a very low scale. And this one also gets a ton of luminosity applied to it and this means that these cracks are really barely noticeable until you look at the normal map because that's where where they will, they will stand out eventually. So then we we take this almost beautiful pattern of connections here and move on to the next frame which is the tiling. This is a key step and this is also a bit tricky because as you can see, this is not just a normal grid. This is not just X by X tiles. 
these tiles have to sort of sit on top of each other. Um, now, I'm sure there, there's a way to do this with, um, with one tile generator, all in one, in one package. But for this substance, I chose a slightly different approach because I actually use two tile generators. To demonstrate this, I'll disable the tile preview so that we just have one image here. Um, and if you look at the first tile generator, so I've currently selected the top one, this one is perfectly aligned with all edges of the image. Whereas the second one, the bottom one, has a global offset applied to it. So it's always offset by half a tile. Now this again has to, um, to respond to any changes in size because the X amount and the Y amount is once again um, exposed, so it can be changed in Substance Player or in a game engine. Now to, to achieve this, I have added a little formula to the global offset, which basically takes the amount of tiles and then divides one by it, because one would mean a 100% offset, and that would mean we just didn't change the texture, we moved it by 4096 pixels in this case, this wouldn't change anything, we would still be perfectly aligned to the grid. But by dividing it by the by the amount of tiles and multiplying it by 0.5, I have a vector, or I can build a vector, because these two can be identical, that always takes the amount, takes the tiles and yeah, offsets them perfectly so that, that the off offset is always half a tile. And then repeated this with two other tile generators and you can already notice a key difference here. These two tile generators have a very high, where is it? There. They have a very high random luminance at one, whereas these two have a random luminous, uh, luminance of, I think it's, yeah, it's 0.4. So they have a, a pretty low random luminance. And this also shows in the final, in the output of this frame, we have one random pattern, and then we have one, let's say, slightly less random pattern. And these two are going to coexist uh, for the rest of this graph because they all have different uses so um, it's important that these two always stay um, on top of each other during warping, which is the next step. You can see that I have two directional warp nodes for each of the outputs. Both of these warps use a different clouds texture. One of them just slightly shifts them to the left. And the next one moves both both of these textures up to the to the right with a bit of a diagonal twist so you can see if we compare them that's the original it's a bit a bit too stiff a bit too perfect and then we have this directional warp which has a bit of random variation applied to it and the same goes for the very random graph, or the one with the high random luminosity. All right, first I'll now continue by following this one, the very random one, up here into the slate pattern. This is also a big, a very important part of this substance because everything besides this large tiling pattern um, comes from this frame. So all these small, these small um, shapes in here, into the stone, into the slate, um, they all come from this pattern. So it's important. So what does it do? It begins with a crystal two texture, which again gets warped a little bit, actually a bit more this time. Um, it also gets this um, directional warp, which is just to the left. 
And as you can see, I used this cloud texture, which has a very, a very fine structure. And that's perfect for this kind of, um, this kind of texture. Because if we look a little bit, yeah, um, it gives these very fine moves in here, these very fine um, deviations. And if you look at some real images of Slate, you can see that a lot of a lot of the time, these um, random differences in the Slate are also very detailed. Detailed, they're very very fine deviations. So it's important that we have that in our substance. And by the way, in case you didn't know about the software that I'm using to preview all of the images, this one is called PureRef. It's a free download and I can really recommend it if you're working with substance and you need to keep track of all, your, all of your reference images. Just as a little side note right here. So moving on. This texture, this um, I call it. I'm going to call it these fibers, maybe even, or this crystal. Let's stick with the term crystal. This crystal um, gets a directional warp. And you can see it's quite a strong one with a strength of 32. The intensity is judged by our node here, the random pattern. And what this random pattern does is two things. On the one hand, it just mm, makes it so that each tile has its own random pattern because the intensity is so strong um, that this is effectively a new random pattern and not just a, a slight deviation anymore. And another interesting thing it does is that it, it has the the gradient from the beginning still applied to it. You can see that every every tile gets darker as you move up because we added this gradient all the back all the way back here, like this. Um, and what this means is that it, the entire texture gets a sort of 30, forty-five degree angle applied to it, and this is also a lot closer to, to what real slate looks like. So this is also an, an important step. Now, the second part of this slate texture is just some noise nodes. So I start out with a, a crystal one, um, and then I add in several different moisture nodes, a bit of blur, and then in the end I combine the two, I multiply them, and you can see this fine texture, it creates these um, these fine dips into the slate. Maybe I can I can get one. Yeah, here if you really if you really zoom in onto the, the texture, you can see these little indentations and all these these small imperfections in here. And they come from, from the bottom part of this graph, the the random noise, whereas these large scale um, deformations or these large scale structures, they come from the top part from this crystal pattern. And with another big step taken care of, we can now look at the curvature, which first of all is based on this blend node, which just takes the structure, the slate structure, and combines it with our not so random um, tile roofing tile pattern. Now, what does the curvature itself actually do? First of all, it generates a normal map, which is not the normal map we are actually going to use during the export. This is just a normal map for our purposes. Um, and what it does is create uses a curvature smooth node. So it creates a curvature map of that, adds some contrast, and levels it out. And this is another um, texture that is going to be very useful for further processing. As you can see, this again splits off into all sorts of directions. One of which is the stains frame, which is where I'm going to continue. The stains frame 
takes both the, um, the original height map and the curvature. It again basically consists of two parts. At the top we have the sh um, sort of you can call them the leaks or um, the fluid. This this sort of pattern, which is create, achieved using um, a shadow node with the, um, the light coming from the top, as you can see, um, and this gets blended with a simple grunge texture, just a standard grunge texture from Substance Designer, and this creates this really nice, a bit gross pattern. Um, pattern of, of like moisture and and like dirt that's stuck up here in the in all these these crevices. On the bottom we take another note. Ironically we sort of abuse the leaks note a little bit here because this doesn't really look like a the output you would normally get from this le leaks note, but it works for our purposes because it creates these um, these large large patches um, which we can add onto our actual leaks texture um, and this is great to, to break up the um, the surface a little bit you can see this if we do zoom out let me just put this into full screen um, here we have these these large patches of like grunge and dirt all over the roofing tiles and that's great to um, create a bit of a bit of variation in the in the surface so and that's actually enough to create the displacement and the normal map so we take we take the height map from all the way over here and this just gets the moisture added to it Yes, I do actually give um, the smudge or the stains a tiny bit of impact in the displacement, but as, as you can see, it's really, really subtle, 0 0.025, so it's barely visible in the height map. But if we look at the normal map, you can see we have this tiny little bit of um, of noise in there, and yeah, that that comes from the from the stains. The height map there you can see it's it's barely noticeable in the height map so with height and normal taken care of we can now move on to the color section which looks like this it's not not as complicated as um, the stains and the the displacement the color again starts off with the curvature and it runs that through a, cur a curve which puts a more attention, as you can see, it puts more attention to the parts that are already fairly bright and that means that yeah, these, these very exposed areas, they get a bit of um, additional lightness to them and that will create a very cool effect later on, as you'll see. For now, we run this through a gradient map, which is just set to black, then red, then white. Um, and this is essentially just the, the foundation of all, all the other color variation, variations that we are going to create. So that's why I have two different HSL nodes here. One of them, one of them is just for um, for the base color, so it just um, puts a bit of variance onto this um, this gradient map. The other one is a bit more involved because you can see it creates a very specific effect. It creates these um, these edge edges over here, and when combining these two, you can see that we have a, a really nice effect where um, where some of these edges are like a little bit darker than the other ones. 
And this is again great to, to break up the texture a little bit because you can see as the opacity of this is actually again the height map. So this is an, a little bit of additional randomness. As you can see when we zoom out this is just pretty much uniform and now we have these these random darker and lighter sections in there and that's really good to have it's more realistic we have another step like this with this second blend node which actually takes us back to this smudge frame over here this is sort of similar to the stains up here um, it's just a slightly different a different style um, of dirt that I created it's based on the very random tile map but this is actually just used as the intensity input for a directional warp which takes this um, this noise which also had this gradient map applied to it and it just um, it just moves it off so that um, again every tile every tile of, uh, of this texture appears to have its own unique shape or pattern even though it's actually just one big image the gradient map itself is just a bunch of different grayscales you can see it's very fine I created this using the, the gradient eyedropper based on a, on a real photo of slate and after some adjustments, some blur, some auto levels, I run this through a second gradient map, which has actually just two um, two functions in one, sort of to sort of say. Um, on the one hand, it turns this into a color output, so we can use it later on, um, and it also inverts the colors because you can see this starts with white and then moves into black. So back to the the real color processing. So to give you a comparison, this is um, the texture after all the the darkening, you could say, um, and this is the original from the from the gradient map, which just with just the um, HS, HSL node applied to it. So you can see this sort of mm, makes it a lot darker and closer to what you probably you want your roofing tiles to look like there is one final step left in here the last blend node this implements the stains that we created up here so on the one hand we have these gradient maps which are again just based on uh, on grunge maps so this is basically a full stains texture which gets blended onto the color map based on the stains texture. And that's the color map taken care of. So we got three out of four done. The only thing left to do is the roughness. The roughness once again takes advantage of the curvature we created up here. And because slate doesn't really have um, entirely reflective parts, it's, there is no part where the roughness could could be zero. That's why I put up this curve, which maps both the very low values and the very high values to very high values, like this. So basically, only the middle ground stays. Um, and after an additional curve which again increases the brightness a little bit more because slate is actually not that reflective it's pre a pretty rough material let me bring up pure ref again you can see up here it's really a really rough material well it it does reflect a little bit so it's not purely diffuse that would be a mistake um but it's not not as not as reflective as some some other roofing tiles like roofing tiles from ceramic or something and as a last step for the roughness i add in the leaks 
So this leak map from up here, all the, the stains as I called them. Um, these stains actually get added to the roughness map. Now you could argue that you would have to subtract the stains because um, the stains are, are wet and wetness obviously decreases the roughness. I think this is a matter of personal taste. I think when I subtract um, the leak, the leaks or the stains, um, I think it gets a little bit too reflective. That's why I, I keep it at add. But that's personal preference. If you want to make your own roofing tiles, you can change that. And with that, we are done. We now have yeah, let me get it. We have a normal map and the height map. These basically come together. We have the color map and we have our roughness. Here's the final graph once again. You can get the SPSIR file for this material on cczotextures.com. Right there. Um, you can also get the SPS file for this material in the Google Drive folder for patrons of CC0 textures. This essentially wraps up the first substance video of hopefully many more. Um, I hope this was interesting to you and I'll see you in the next one.